Hello right, guys, how is it going? It is Fake Hero coming at you once again with another Legends of Rune Terror video. You would not believe it. Joining me today is going to be none other than Viscerous TV, or maybe preferred we call him Vis. Hey, gone man. I, I'm doing really well. That was a that was a hell of an intro for Thanks. someone like me. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a couple of years practicing, man. So obviously. Oh, yeah, yeah. My man, sorry. Go on. No, you got no, no, no. You got it. This is your, this is this is your vote. I'm just, I'm a guest in your house. This is completely <laughs> off script, guys. I do apologize. Anyways, obviously you guys can see. Clicked on the video. There's some balance changes. We've all been aware of this. It's been coming, and they might have got leaked early. So I would imagine these are going to be the finalized uh, card changes. But I do apologize if some of the cards are not the same. But it's pretty. I'm feeling pretty confident, man. Honestly. Mm. Mm, yeah, this seems pretty solid. I yeah. these look like changes Riot would make. I, definitely. I, yeah. You I would not disagree I, with the slight tweaks. The classic one mana, one mana changes here and there. It's got to be true. It's it's look. I, there's nothing here that's outrageous. Everything here makes sense. I think. Um, so I, I I would be surprised if we saw huge changes to this list. I mean, if if the wording was changed in one or two, then I'd be yeah sure fine. But um, I'm thinking what we're looking at here is probably what we're looking on patch day. Definitely um, agree. This, Definitely yeah. agree. Yeah. All right, I guess one more thing to add. Obviously, there was a leak which had a link to the like the actual official Riot website, but it got taken down unbelievably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they sorted that out real quick. They, they <laughs> Shut it down, Jim. <laughs> That's exactly right. Here. Unbelievable. Classic. So I guess we we will have to do a special uh, shout out to Fair Jordans who kind of splashed together mm. this artwork here, which looks fucking amazing. I will leave all the links to his bullshit down in the description. Uh, go check him out. That would be solid. I'm pretty yeah, sure he's, he's done. Like, he's done the community a massive solid. He has. I'm pretty sure he's also Australian, if I'm not mistaken. Oh wow! Really? I'm pretty Dude. sure I heard. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oi, oi, oi. That's it. Oi, that's oi. it. Unbelievable. <laughs> Anyway, guys, I guess let's talk about the cards. Uh, so we're pretty much going to run through these. We're going to go by one by one, get our initial impressions, and then we'll go from there. So first mm -hmm. of all, uh, Anivia, mana change, uh, seven mana to yep. six mana. What's your initial impressions about that, uh, Viscerous? Uh, look, the majority of these changes, I think, are good changes. I mean, I've, I've yes. had a little bit of a skim through it, and we'll talk about it Same. more in depth. But I, I'm not disappointed with a lot of these changes I'm, I'm surprised by a couple and we'll get to those later because some cards have just been straight up turned into different cards yeah they're, they're, um, those were they, uh, <laughs> yes dude i can't wait to get to those they, ones they they just they like completely fill a different slot but anivia to me dropping her from seven to six mana that is giving freljord the push it needs at the moment because mm. freljord's in a pretty dire state with the exception of they who endure decks you don't see a hell of a lot of it on ladder. And I love Anivia. Anivia is such a fun card to play. Seeing her coming down to six mana to see, you know, how she's going to be able to be played, you know, more often. Um, I'm super keen mm. on this change. I, I love War Mothers is such a fun deck to play. And it's seen a little bit of a comeback just in the past few days. This is just going to make it that much easier. I'm, yeah. I'm happy about this. I think Grappler may have had a, a little bit of a War Mother's call on stream, which kind of caused it to blow up. But um, yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely don't disagree with you. Uh, any change is a good change, I guess, to follow up on that. I will say, I believe, mm. just kind of judging by how these patches have been going, I feel like there's very similar philosophies to how they handle some of the other games where if a card doesn't see play, they all tend to make a change to it just to kind of give it a boost, see if people will play it. Very much the league approach. Yes, yeah, very they'll, much. They'll they'll take underplayed cards and they will bump them up just for the purpose of variety. It's not necessarily motivated by um you know a, a balance and equilibrium exactly. in achieving. It's literally just to shake things up and keep it fresh. Exactly. I'm okay I'm, with that. I like. I'm that. fine. I'm fine. We we can yeah. agree on that. That's great. And I think Anivia <laughs> definitely was a card that did not see any any play throughout uh, at least the past almost since rising tides honestly i feel like anivia's has been like overshadowed by so much more control cards yep yep definitely anyway so i guess there's not much else to talk about anivia i think bumping it down to six mana will increase her play rate at least but i don't expect to see anything broken if i'll be honest no no, no. i don't think so i six mana doesn't create any break points to my mind that she would otherwise have at seven 
Um, no, because usually, usually the combo is kind of get your Anivia onto board. Maybe in the following couple turns, you'll try and do a couple of like cheeky combos to get multiple copies of her or just generate yeah. value. Yeah, and a level up condition is still being enlightened and hitting turn 10. So it's not yeah. like you're able to achieve a, win, uh, a flip condition earlier either. So, exactly right. Yeah. I mean, it kind of just gives you the ability to sustain a bit better and kind of start to utilize that egg, that second form of her one mm. turn earlier. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so the next change was it probably another similar thing I didn't expect to happen, but I didn't. it made more sense once I seen the Anivia change, and that is a bump up in Darius' stats from 5 HP to 6 HP. Uh, now, also, guys, I'm probably, it's probably uh, very aware that you probably can't see this perfectly, but we will definitely uh, explain the stat changes and stuff so hopefully you can hear us out yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so initial and, impressions well my initial impression is um for every champion usually we see them paired up with the leveled up and uh pre-flip uh variation but for darius here fair jordans has only provided the leveled up version so i'm i'm led to believe that darius is getting one health on flip i didn't even um, think about that and one health across both both versions of him so it's just like a really small bump to maybe push darius back into you know a more yeah. frequent and it's like again it kind of follows on with anivia's thing and then like riot's probably philosophy that's like okay this card's not played let's make a slight tweak and see if anything changes yeah yeah exactly and look one health to a 10 attack darius going from five to six i don't think that that's a huge buff I think your threshold between five and six is not a huge threshold. It's like it's nothing like between three and four. Three and four is one of the biggest health thresholds, like the biggest jumps you can see. Consistently five and in six, Runeterra, I, yeah. Yeah, I don't think five and six presents a huge jump. I think this is a little buff, and I think that's all he needed. Yeah, uh, I, I, yeah. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not miffed yeah. by this. I'm not particularly thrilled. I'm just kind of. I'm kind of pleasantly surprised, I think. I definitely agree. I I don't think this is going to help get Darius into the meta. I think it's just going to reward the Darius people that have a boner for him a little bit more <laughs> of a uh, comfortability. I mean, who doesn't have a... <laughs> Noxie and Guillotine is the most satisfying spell in Rune Terror. I, I that's not even his... Um, that's not even his spell card, I don't believe, either. No, Decimate is, is Decimate Darius' is. spell. Yeah, yeah. Noxian Guillotine's is ultimate from League, but it's not it his champion spell. How right? unfortunate. Yeah. Now, I will say there is a card <laughs> further down the track that we will get to, but there was a, there was a Harrowing Darius deck that may have gotten a slight buff from this. Yes, but yes. We'll, we, we, are we talk, we'll talk about that later. We circle yeah, back we to will. that. Now, <laughs> the next card shocked the shit out of me. This one flew completely under the radar for me, but a very pleasing change. And not just enough yep. buff, or, but buff or a nerf, more like a rework. And that is going to be yep. Braum. Braum is getting a tax stat and one mana increase. Yeah. Now, That's wild. <laughs> dude, that, I was on the stream earlier today, and that was one of the most exciting things I ever saw. Granting Braum the ability to actually trade stuff off. Incredible. Mm. Yep. Um, yep. Initial initial impressions, Vis, hit me up. Well, uh, that see, uh, giving him the ability to attack is incredible. I talk about this when I talked about the slot bot changes. Going mm. from three to four is a huge threshold uh, or a huge health threshold, but you literally go from not being able to attack to being able to attack. It's fundamentally the, the biggest difference in attack, going from zero to one. But the crazy thing about Braum is his leveled up keyword is now applied to his pre-flip. So he's gone up from three to four mana, but he he survived, he he summons mighty poros pre flip now. I didn't even see that. Hold That's up. That's mental. Whoa, hang on. I didn't even see that. You've got to be fucking kidding me. That's that's great. So the whole point of leveling Braum like before was that oh he'd be able to generate value and create mighty poros once he's flipped because they can create a real issue. The poros they're fantastic blockers. They remove a fair bit of stuff. The overwhelm is fantastic if you want plunder. He has that pre-flip now, and all it cost you was an extra mana to get the ability to attack and summon mighty poros. That is a fat <laughs> buff. Hang on, so is this the first time he survives damage? Just purely the first time, similar to Katarina, kind of when she's summoned. Oh, actually, sorry, yeah. So, yeah. Okay, I didn't see I that. Think... So that's the, only the first time he, he summons a Mighty Pro. And then yeah, flip, but he does it every still, time. Still, I didn't even see that to now. And this reminds me of the Katarina treatment. Just a bonus addition. 
Yeah. Now, he does have a mana increase, but I honestly don't give a shit. What about you? No, no. I think the well, power of Braum didn't matter about, like, when you played him on turn, whatever. He just needed to be comboed with cards. Yeah. I mean, he's going to be less effective. Well, excuse me. He's going to come out uh, later against aggressive decks, which Braum is very good at dealing with. But he's now no longer just a wall that you have to get through and hope that they don't have... Um, God, what is it? He's three mana spelled. Take heart. Take heart. Yeah. yeah. Um, and just hope that they don't have that spell. Now he will legitimately remove units like chump blockers and mm -hmm. spiders. And That's stuff, it. And he'll make a poro. Now like, the follow up on that, that is actually amazing because I think yeah. Braum to me, when I first see him, this big idiot with a huge shield, <laughs> like I feel yeah, like he should be <laughs> the most uncomfortable card for an aggro deck to see. But up until now, it hasn't really yes. been the case at all. Now, that Legion Saboteur that's trying to swing in is going to get chumped every time. And I really like yeah. that. And hey, they I might want a Blood Transfusion, but that's just going to give us extra Poros and buff up our Braum, if anything. Ex yeah, exactly. And like I, I, I agree with you. I think Braum should be an insta concede against aggro decks. Yes, I think like there's that's, been that's his purpose. Right. I think I've seen similar because I've played a bit of Hearthstone in the past, and I've seen similar cards to this. That as the aggro player, they play a certain card around about the mid game, and you just go, "Well, fuck me. What do I do?" Yeah, you you've got like two, three turns max. Yeah. Um, you know, unless you've got a decent way to get rid of him, and that. Braum is a fantastic, I call them release valves. He's a way of tempering aggro decks, you know? Mm. So and whenever they be. get out of control, Braum is going to come back into a prevalence and it's just going to push the meta to cycle again. So, yeah, it's awesome to see Braum. Awesome to see him get a change. Great. Awesome I'm, I, definitely, I definitely do agree. I do agree. Uh, we're talking about Basilisk Rider, right? Basilisk Rider. This is another one that kind of flew under the radar for me. Okay, so yeah. he's getting... What is he getting? He's receiving the uh, one mana, one health buff. What are your first impressions about Basilisk Rider, Viserys? Uh, he he needed a change. I mean, he was kind of. I used him in a couple of meme decks to pretty great. <laughs> yes, that's what he is because he, well, that's what he is. He's a meme card because yeah. the trouble is he's just poorly statted. I mean, if you have ever been in one of BBG streams, he just he just shits on this card. He just, he, just, he just thinks it's garbage, even if it does get the level up. Um, and I think, look, it's going to give it a little bit of a help. I, I, I don't know whether this is going to like couple with the Darius change and we might see like a weird kind of mid-rangey Noxus start to rear its head um, Perhaps. or have some different closes rather than just the straight up burn. Um, but I mean, yeah, I'm not, yeah. I'm not mad about it. I'm not mad about it either. For me yeah. personally, I feel like Basilisk Rider reminds me of a lot of the Darius change where it's just like for the boner players, they get a bit more of a reward now, yeah. but generally it's not going to shake anything up. It's still very susceptible, uh, to missing your allegiance buff, which is no joke. And I don't think there's very many, if not any at all, full Noxus decks. So... Yeah. No, I mean, you can do some mono Noxus lists, but you have to remember, like, without that allegiance proc, you're looking at a four mana five three. Yeah, you are. Like, that that's a feels bad, man. You can I play, think you can play a Braum for four mana, <laughs> <laughs> and you can summon a Poro. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, I think. I think you just go play Mono Demacia. Don't worry about Basilisk Rider for now. Maybe in future card sets, we may see some support for an archetype like this. Maybe like a really big overwhelmed Noxus deck that just wants to kick their asses. But uh, up until then, mm. I think Basilisk Rider is a bit of a bit of a sleeper for now. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think it needs a little bit more. I mean, I there's, there's also a Farron change that we'll get to later, but I, I don't know. If yeah. It's supporting the Noxus boner package. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. I guess the next card's going to be a really big one, guys. And this is the one people mm. are probably most excited for, but it might not be as exciting as you would hope. We are getting some changes to uh, Black Market Merchant, and it's not really seen in the cards here, but we're getting a change mm. to the mechanic that is uh, plundering for the Pilfered effect, which is going to be keyworded now as NAB. So now we're going to steal yeah. the bottom card of our opponent's deck. I think this was heavily requested by the community. Uh, mm. And also Black Market Merchant is receiving a one health reduction what are your first impressions about well first of all the new nab effect viscerous uh look i think it's exactly the change that yoink needed the yeah. trouble with 
The trouble with Yoink is Yoink is very much a feels bad mechanic. Um, and, and, and a lot of people complained about it because, you know, you have stuff stolen, like your win condition and whatnot. And that's just a, it's just a bad player experience mm-hmm. by switching it from like taking the same approach that Toss did by effectively stealing or getting rid of cards that you probably wouldn't see in the vast, vast majority of matches bar a control V control matchup. Um, it, it takes away that sting. And I think it doesn't really detract from the power level of Yoink, which is inherently random anyway. Yeah. So I, I think that the problem was it was a feels bad mechanic. And I think they've effectively mitigated that with the shift to nab and drawing from the bottom. So I'm they sorry have. This change. And Freyold yeah. can uh, rest, uh, rest easy tonight knowing that they can buff as many units as they want on top of the deck without any issues. And it's not just oh, that. Oh, yes. Yep. Yep. Don't oh, forget, Viserys. Let Freyold you, you, go wild. You, you, there has to be a bloke out there that was playing Swim's um, Turbo Fizz OTK deck and had his like 12, 13 fizz taken <laughs> from him at some point. Unfortunately, they can't take fizz because it's a champion cup. Oh, that's right. It's champion. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, well, there you go. So, well, buddy, um, it, it changes. Uh, my final thoughts for the uh, nab as I guess you could almost could have written it off as uh, honestly, because my first thought was like, why not just make a random card from the deck? But I've skimmed past that now. I've uh, kind of choked on my words. I believe that this will actually mitigate uh, randomness completely, which is kind of important because it's almost random, mm-hmm. but not technically random. But who knows what cards we may see in the future? Maybe cards that go yeah. to the bottom of your deck. And who knows how this might affect cards like this? This healthy yeah. change now, making sure that it is not random, just means that we may see some different developments within the future. And uh, yeah, yeah. I guess the I... other thing we talk about is uh, the 1 HP difference. Uh, initial thought of that quickly. Oh, with Black Market Merchant? Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's it's good. Uh, yeah. it, it's I think so much easier to remove. You almost um, could have having... made it a two mana 1-1, one, one, honestly. And yeah, you could have. Like the value in like no one ever trades with black market merchant. No. This is just going to make it much easier to remove. Um, you know, static spiders, whatever. That's it. And, and this card, like the value that it can generate if it sticks on Insane. board, then yeah, I feel like you should have mm. to protect it, and this just makes it that much more vulnerable. That's it. And I will follow up with all my personal um opinions I had about black market merchant and pilfering in general. Uh, take uh, one of your most strongest meta decks at the moment, Tempo Sejuani. A deck revolved heavily around uh, Tempo, board base, etc., yeah. etc. Et that kind of deck doesn't need cards like this. And that the card's so powerful that you would still run it in a deck that's so purely focused around Tempo mm-hmm. and actually fighting for the board like Mono Demacia, etc. I think the fact that they can run a card like this without getting punished or losing, you know, the board presence kind of makes it even more unhealthy, if I'm being honest. I feel like there needs mm. to be like a thin line between I'm going to be a Bilgewater deck that runs cards like this for control and not just I'm going to be in Bilgewater so I'm going to run this package no matter what. There has to be a p- sacrifice and a payoff for running cards like this. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. I, yeah, I agree with you 100%. Yeah. That's just a personal preference. So so the next two cards um, aren't going to really be changes. Pilfered Goods, uh, Yordle Grifter just received the keyword change which is going to be uh, following yeah, along with the nab, nab effect. Uh, Dreg Drudgers, uh, I can't pronounce that dude. Dreg Dredges. Uh, that's the one, my man. <laughs> so this is kind of unexpected for me, um, but it kind of makes sense now that I think about it and when I thought about it a bit earlier. So it's receiving a one attack stat loss. Uh, what are your thoughts about that, Mon man? Uh, yeah, it's in line with deep. So I play heaps of deep on stream. My man, I don't, um, I don't play enough deep. I honestly <laughs> just get that deep away from me. I can't pile it for shit. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's it's it was my deck of choice. So, um, for a lot of the meta, like probably bef- before we saw in duo, I was a huge fan of deep because deep eight burn alive. Um, oh, the deep. amount of life, yeah, the life steal, the whale grasp, vile feast, all of these tools that you had available was really good. And I'm the kind of guy that will like I get the most satisfaction in Rune Terror when I'm playing a deck that will just d- destroy a meta deck. Like my <laughs> peak viscerous is when I'm countering the meta. That's that's when I'm happiest or or a meme deck. Like in so you call you call deep the meta counter? 
Deep for a long time was the answer to the best answer to Noxus Burn. So back mm. when um, Boom Crew Rookie and Legion Rearguard were up at their height, this was a really good thing to do. One of the things that Deep struggles with is um, the early game. The, the the people the thing that people don't understand a lot about deep decks is deep will need to get deep somewhere between turn five and seven to effectively close out the game and that is heavily dependent on you drawing cards like dreg dredges um the toad for two one four if, if, the two mana mm. one four i forget what it's called and then the three mana three two with lifesteal is um arguably the best card for this it's just such a good early game it's unit. insane dead bloom wanderer is insane and uh Thank i you, definitely dead um wanderer. I definitely agree. I think I've, now that I think about it, there's been some matchups I've had against Deep where they just didn't play anything on the first couple of turns yeah. and then I actually just ate them. Yeah, and, huh. and nothing happens. Yeah. yeah. You don't have those big scary turns where they drop a lot of stuff. You're just waiting so to turns react. One, that's it. Turns one through five are the most important for a Deep deck. If you get Deep anywhere between five and seven, you've usually got that much of an advantage that you can kind of grind the game mm. out. Like you're safe once you're over that line. The trouble is early game and making sure that you don't get, you know, crushed. Dreg think, dredges adds to that weakness. Yeah, it does. And I, I'm, I'm obviously me being a deep player. That's a little bit sad to see, but I get it. <laughs> but um, have you ever been on the opposite end? I think this change probably revolves around. I would have to assume that what happens when deep curves out when they play Drake dread uh, the. Your boy Dreg dredges. <laughs> into into Thorny Toad into Dead Bloom Wanderer. I auto concede yeah. a lot. I auto yes. concede a lot. Yes, yeah, because that feels well, really my, bad. Yeah, my favorite thing to do is um, uh, when I'm playing into They Who Endure is to pass turns one and two, play a Dead Bloom Wanderer on three, and then miss, miss call, call back. Dirty. Yep, <laughs> that's that's. <laughs> Oh, yeah. that feels good. <laughs> so, so that so guys, that's the change to uh. Yeah, boy. Yeah. Can, Bisous, can you say the name one more time, please? Dreg Dredges. <laughs> he does that uh, voice where he's like, eh, he's like, me, me, I want I, or whatever. He's got that really high-pitched, whiny voice. Yeah. Unbelievable, guys. <laughs> so I think um, to finalize that, I don't think this is going to impact Deep very much. Is this going to stop you from feeling so bad when they curve out on you? Because uh, they're, still, think, they're probably, still, they're probably still going to romp you, to be honest, if they curve out. I, I think you're going to feel it. I think you, know, you, I might, think, you probably feel uh, it having a, having a one, one instead of a two, one's pretty significant, but I don't think it's going to kill deep. No. Um, so you, 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 as a deep player, if you've played a lot of it, you're going to feel that because there's a lot of cards that you want to trade with for two mm. to attack that you can't. Um, but mm. you know, you're not, it's not going to kill you. Yeah. Well, the next card now, I guess I could follow up with that since we have the pro a deep player here. I guess I could argue that I'm a bit of a pro endure player, but I played it before it was cool, guys. I played yeah, it back when I was about to say, you and me, we're, we're going to have words. I played it when we had Thresh and Trindamir, okay? This is when oh, we were gangster. OG, they OG. Endure. When I first got into Runeterra, guys, the first deck I climbed to Diamond was, was actually Endure. I got a bit of a boner for it, and I guess we'll yeah. talk about the change to They Who Endure, which I guess people were maybe expecting. But mm -hmm. first of all, I guess I will say my first impressions on this one. I don't think this is going to change much, but there'll be one scenario in particular I'll add on in a sec. But I'll get your impressions, first of all, as well, uh, uh, on the card. It... I, I think this is good, and i tell you why. Because <laughs> it makes me. it far more difficult to combo with Atrocity. It does. Uh, it's one turn the, away. The, yeah, it's one turn away, but not only that, you need 13 mana, which you means you have no choice but to bank three spell mana if you're mm. trying to position to do that. And you have to be on turn 10. So this, this hurts a fair bit. Like, it is one mana change, but it severely restricts the flexibility they who endure had. Yeah, and so they can't yeah, just, they sure can't so. just play it brainlessly now. They have to actually think. <laughs> I'm all for um, it. I'm all I for think, it. I think that 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 part of it, if I if I'm going to be controversial, I don't know if it's going to really hurt. It's not going to hurt the decent endure player, but it's going to hurt the average chump. That's for sure. I think um, I'm fine with that. My first impression <laughs> for this, my first impression for this uh, slight tweak 
was my thoughts mm. were if you've ever played against Endua, you would kind of expect them to kind of play this towards the later half of the game make sense atrocity mm. in the game but i think there's there's the odd case scenario where it's not often but it happens actually it's it's pretty regular i guess every now and then they're actually going to play this on turn six as roughly an eight eight or a nine nine mm. and that is also fucked up that is if actually the early like game goes well if yeah. the early game goes well and they curve into Endua as even an eight eight if they need to that's kind of annoying yeah. for a lot of decks, mm. but um, yeah. This maybe um maybe I'm like kind of underlooking into it. Maybe this buff uh, nerf is going to be a lot more effective than I think. I, I also I also think that whenever you have a card nerfed, it just drops in play rate. It drops and in play rate not, because people uh, don't want to play it because they're like it's not as good as it used to be. Yeah, well, it just doesn't feel the same. Um, and mm. you know the nerf might not necessarily be incredibly impactful. But they who endure is incredibly dominant, and to me, this this screams of a change that is in equal parts balance and variety. Yeah, and it's that, also this is also the yeah. other spectrum to like the Anivia and Darius change. This is like when a card's played too much. Again, yes. Riot's philosophy. It may not even yeah. be the power of it necessarily as well. Maybe the play rate. They're like, who knows? Hmm. Mm. But yeah, I guess so. in the end, uh, this was needing to be changed. Um, there's been so much in Dua, whether it's oppressive or not, or whether, you know, the meta needs it. I think it makes sense. I think mm. for now it makes sense, mainly because the cards around in Dua too are supporting it so much more that you have to kind of bring it down a bit. Yes. Because before yeah, Endua I mean, as a six mana card, it wasn't like it was strong, but it, you weren't... You weren't like getting your ass romped by it. And then they were never playing it early game. They were playing it very late. Very, very late. Yeah, yeah. But exactly. now yeah. there's a couple of scenarios where they can play it on like turn six, maybe atrocity the next turn. This is going to save you one turn. Mm, mm. Yeah. Um, then, mm. Yes, go on, go on. No, no, it's just good to see. It's just, that's just good to see. Yeah. I good to see. I, I think a lot of players are going to be upset though, but they'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, well, they'll get over it. They'll go back to playing elusives. <clears throat> so the next card is not actually a card specifically more than it is uh, Jinx's uh, leveled up forms ability spell. There's actually getting a buff to Super Mega Death Rocket from two mana down to one. This was definitely unexpected, but mm. uh, let me get your initial thoughts on this because I don't know about this uh, one. Look, I mean, going from two mana to one mana, it's Doesn't literally hurt. half the cost. Um, so, I mean, it's definitely a good buff. Um and I think Jinx aggro decks have sort of fallen off. PNZ's kind of taken this mid rangey control area with Heimerdinger so prevalent oh, in the favorite. meta. So, <laughs> you know, it'll be good to see PNZ decks making a shift back to the aggro because I, I like a meta where the aggro decks I'm facing aren't elusives or just straight up burn. You know, mm. there there's a certain level of skill involved in playing a Jinx deck, like the ability to know when and what to discard is, is definitely something and i would say um, that draven jinx is one of the hardest decks i've ever seen i think that's yeah, been it's yeah. been a thing i'm pretty sure yeah it used to be uh, very I, popular I, yeah this is this is just a nice change i think to get jinx up to a bigger power level i think yeah. the change from two to one is probably people are going to feel that a little bit more mm. than i think you might expect because the difference between like the biggest difference in mana cost is one and zero but then just behind that is two and one in my opinion um, because it's literally half the cost, you know, literally, and that's going to make it so much easier. And it does support the uh, aggro strategy. Having cheap cards is always useful. I feel like yeah. um, I feel like Riot almost wants to make this zero mana, but they won't do that right now. I think it's oh, like zero, it, I yeah, think zero mana would be too much. It might be. Uh, hey, wouldn't it? I guess one mana is yeah. fair because it is still pretty powerful. But at the same time, like I guess the other spectrum of it is uh, I guess sometimes, most of the time, when you get to the point where you're playing Jinx for the Mega Death Rocket, I don't think it really mm. matters that it's two mana or one mana. It just kind of matters that you've got refill because you're probably not going to be yeah. spending that mana anyway. So, because your hand's empty. But who knows? It might remember, become the, relevant. The, 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 it's it's a great card. Like Death Rocket, that's, that's, a, that's a one mana decimate with extra AoE damage. Mm -hmm. you know? I guess so. If you ever level up Jinx, you're, you're happy regardless. But now you've got an extra bonus there. So that's great. Yeah, if you spend more than three turns with a leveled up Jinx on the opposite side, you're having GG. a good time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I guess the other side of things that needed to be touched up was the Escaped Abomination. This is Curse Keeper's uh, last breath form. And I guess mm. one change that probably needed to also be done 
first impressions um yeah it's dialing back the power level of shadow isles um it's, it's dying to yeah. cards now <laughs> yeah it is the difference between three and four mana is huge yes I've said we talked once, about this earlier again. yes yeah um so i think look this is a very specific change and i think it's designed to give you just that little bit more breathing room when you're dealing with these you know turn two seven six in stats with the that's right and, you know all of this other business so look you're going for four to three is an awesome change it's a very specific change being that it's only the last breath form of curse mm -hmm. keeper but i think it's an appropriate way to dial back that power level i think it's the most reasonable way to do it similar to the grizzled ranger changes etc um i will say mm. that i kind of thought they may have taken a different approach with this in that they would have left it untouched and maybe they would have done something to Curse Keeper itself, but we won't talk about the what ifs. We'll just talk about the what has happened. But my, yeah, um, I, mm. I did think they were going to maybe make Curse Keeper unable to attack, but that's for food for thought for another time. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. So the next few cards are going to be pretty exciting, guys. So Captain mm. Farron, mostly they, they uh, posted out a Twitter thing saying, hey, guys, we're looking to touch up some epics within the future. 1.4 mm. what are your thoughts so the next some of the next few epic cards are actually getting significant changes not necessarily buffs or nerfs but mm. changes so captain farron is now going to be a when i'm summoned so it's a, when i'm summoned by the way guys instead of mm. play uh create three decimates in hand so it's no longer going to replace your entire hand with uh decimates mm. for all your boner players but it is going <laughs> to provide you with three decimates and you're still going to keep your hand uh, what are your thoughts about this one, Viserys? That's insane value. I That's think it's so crazy. Good. I think it's, it's crazy. It's 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 really really good because you have to remember that Captain Farron before it was a play effect, not a summon effect. So now you have access to resurrect effects. I know. You don't I know. Ordin yeah, you don't ordinarily play Shadow Isles and Noxus together outside of Spider Aggro, but I mean, shit, this might change with how the Farrens change because. Yeah. It's not only is it now a summon effect over a play effect, but you just straight up create three decimates rather than, you know, the cost being that your hand is now entirely decimate. You can't do anything else except damage. Now mm -hmm. you have the option of using three decimates. That's insane. Um, I do hope that, that we see a, I want to see a OTK decimate turn where we play five decimates in one turn. If that's even possible, <laughs> that would be amazing. Um, I, 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 I don't me, think it's possible it, at the moment. If there's a meme deck build to do it, I'll find it. <laughs> um, I, 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 I've been trying forever to make Jay Madata work, and now I'm going to have to start my rethinking when we talk about yeah. that later. But so I guess change um, is really cool. Yeah. This is exciting, yeah. but I don't know if we're necessarily going to see insane stuff right now because it still is eight mana, and it's basically like an eight, eight mana burn card, which but does have overwhelm. Yeah. It, it has, has it has overwhelm. This is a finisher. This is what it's Captain definitely Farron a finisher. Captain and he's just, it's just, the, the the beautiful thing about this change is it's effectively just taken the shackles off Farron. There was a yeah. huge downside and he would destroy your hand and replace it with decimates and you had to play him. Now he's just so much more flexible an option. I think mm. you're going to see him in some decks. And I believe, I'm, I'm going to call it now, in a few expansions from now, a few extra cards, who knows what will happen. I think uh, if the meta ever slows down to a point where finishes happened on turn eight or nine, which aren't just like Ezreal, etc., I think Farron, <laughs> we may be coming back to Farron in the future. I'm going to call it now. It's probably going to be nerfed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, uh, this is cool. I'm a fan yeah. of this. This is good. Okay, I cannot pronounce the next card. Genevieve, Genevieve Elmhart. Elmhart. That's the one. Yep. So this one was uh, kind of like went under the reindeer for me. I, I heard people talking about changing this card, but um, so now it's going to be a six mana five five. The effect is still the same. It will buff your give other allies plus one plus one this round. Um, I don't really know what to say about this one. Have you got any thoughts on this one? Yeah. So this was this was the uh, the Scythria of the Scout archetype. Um, right. So when we really early on in Rising Tides, one of the biggest decks to sort of crop up immediately was Quinn MF Scouts because people worked out very quickly that Scout units and MF get along really, really well. <laughs> yes, extremely um, synergistic. Yeah, so Genevieve Elmhart gave you this option where on turn six, 
it was kind of like this is end game because what she would do is she would buff all your units to effectively value trade create a turn where your scout units would clear out the front line and then if mf didn't give you the value that you needed to sort of push over the top the second attack would do it um mm. so she and this, and this, this card herself I mean. does have challenger and scout by the way yeah, it has Challenger and Scout. So she, th- this is why I say when I talk about it, it's the Scythria of, um, of uh, Scout decks because it does the same thing for Scout, for, you know, for Quinn MF archetypes that Scythria does for Bannerman archetypes. Arguably, you could say that Scythria is a better card. It's better statted. It creates fearsome units and it's a persistent effect over That's every true. attack. But it is a Demacia card. Exactly. But if you were playing uh, Genevieve Elmhart, you don't care about persistent effects. You want to, you know, tempo out, punish the enemy as soon as possible, the game's done. You don't mm. care about turn six, seven, eight, nine, you know? So, so as a six mana four, four, she was kind of like similar effect, underplayed, not really seen as an option. But now a six mana five, five, who knows? Big problem. She also trades with a lot of other cards effectively now. So she mm. will remove Lux, for instance. Mm, definitely. Yeah. So you see, so, you, so you think this might be a bit of a, a meta a meta breaker card? Bit of yeah. A well, I mean, well, I mean card? There, there's well, there's a couple of cards that sit at five banner that um, you know, you might need to remove at turn six. A good example is Braum pre flip. Oh, needs Braum, to get removed. <laughs> Darius pre flip needs to get removed. Anivia five health. Garen five health. So I guess um, similar as the 3 HP is quite a powerful uh, stat line well, once we go from 3 to 4, I guess going from 4 attack to 5 attack is also a similar aspect. Yeah, for mid-range, that's definitely a big definitely. one. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. So that's uh, Gen- Gen- Genevieve... <laughs> Genevieve Elmhart. <laughs> My man. So I've got Viscous on the line. He's been helping me out. All right. So the next card, um, another one that kind of just... A lot of these epic cards just flew under the radar for me. But the Harrowing mm. is getting a change. This and is this awesome. is going to be a direct... So this is going to be a direct buff to Harrowing Darius, as we talked about earlier. So Darius getting a buff, Harrowing get a, getting a one-mana change, one-mana cheaper. Exciting. What do you think? Man, oh, I'm so stoked. I love I think, this uh, card. A card like this being able to come down a turn earlier, because this is like the OG of finishes. Like This is not like Captain Farron where you will play it and you may end the game on the spot. A lot of times Harrowing can end the game on the spot. And now yeah. it's one mana cheaper. Yeah, this Boy. comes down turn six. And then maybe this you play Captain Farron and then you play Harrowing the next turn. And then you've got, and then you've and got, then you've got six got decimates, decimates in here. In your <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Yeah, the harrowing is awesome. It is a fantastic meme card. It's an card. amazing card. I love this There's thing. There's been so many similar cards in a lot of card games at the moment. I think um, this is a much nice change, but we'll have to yeah, wait and yeah, see yeah. just how powerful it is. I oh, think oh, I think yeah, it's going to be strong. I this think is going it's into be few strong. decks. I'll tell you yeah. that much. <laughs> this is awesome. I mean, I'm, like, I'm very keen for this. Shadow Wiles <laughs> might just consider throwing in one now, just because. Like, yeah, why not throw this into your deep deck? Holy shit. It, yeah, like, I mean, <laughs> sometimes, like, the, the funny, the funny thing as well is Harrowing now compete, competes with Ruination. Like, they fill the same slot now. So mm. Ruination at nine mana is a very defensive option. Harrowing is a very aggressive option. And they fill so, exactly the same role. In opposite yeah. spectrums, one's going to fill the board, one's going to destroy the board. Yeah. yeah. So I think, I think <laughs> yeah. I'm super keen too. I think there's going to... I hope that this becomes something in the meta. Because mm, it's mm. going to be your anti-control card. This is going to be your card for like that's going to like punish control players for sure, dude. Like They're not going to yeah, be this, able this, to just this, sit there this and just... punishes Ruination. Yes. Oh, it does. <laughs> not that we see Ruination very much, but and now it's going to be a punishing thing. I think that um, maybe not right now, but within the near future, maybe with new cards, I yeah. think... We'll get to a point because at the moment I feel like a lot of control decks like Lux, etc. can just get away with whatever they want and they're not going to get punished Mm. for it. Mm. Now, I don't know. (laughs) Well, actually, it just occurred to me, um, uh, War Mothers. You might see this crop up in War Mothers. You might. Um, Fortunately, no War Mother uh, changes directly, but... Well, I mean, you know, um, Anivia will come back with Harrowing and then it'll turn into an egg and then turn back into Anivia. Anivia did a good buff too. (laughs) mm, So you might see that. There you go. All righty, guys. So the next card's getting 
I'm not going to call it a nerf or a buff, but it is getting reworked, and that is going to be Poro Herder. I like mm. this change. So it's going from four mana to two mana. Same effect, different stat line. I guess, in a sense, if we're comparing a four mana three four to a two mana two three, the two three is more value per mana. And um, mm. I like Poro Herder. I think the first thing I think about is the ability to like play a Poro turn one, this turn two. I like that. Yep. What are your thoughts? Uh, exactly. I think mm-hmm. I, uh, Poro... Poro we don't care about decks. the three four. We don't care about the three four. We want to draw Poro, so that's all we want to do. Poro decks are an aggressive deck. They're like right. they're they 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 need to do stuff quick. Um, mm. and I think you know it's like you said, it's not really a nerf or a buff. It's kind of just shifting it into a different slot. Yes. Um, because they took away the second draw, and you know, oh, what did you they? Got as a result. Sorry, I missed yeah, that part. So, so, so it is no, so, kind so, of a rework. Yeah, so so you went from four to two mana, and then you draw one Poro instead of yeah. two, and then they took one stat from either side. I think that so, evens it out pretty well. Yeah, uh, it just it just does what I think it should do better, which is support Poros in those earlier turns, and it also just gives you a bit more gas, which is what you need for Poros. Is Poros is, is effectively a swarm deck. Mm. You just you flood the board with Poros, and then you mm. play harder the fluff, and you're that's right. Consists. And I don't think we've traditionally seen a pure aggro Poro deck. We've always seen like kind of like a very structured combo kind of Poro deck. Mm. But who knows if maybe we can start to see uh, Poros turn one, Poro her to turn two, and we start to curve out. That would be kind of fun. Yeah, there's there's another. I think there's another Poro buff in here somewhere. There so is Aurel I'm, I'm, I'm Poralius. Keen. I'm I'm keen. I'm keen for it. I guess um we'll move on from there. So the next card, I guess, it was another one that has a similar Thank treatment to win. Fuck! <laughs> Holy moly! This so should have probably happened ages on the ago. same level as like the uh, the Endure changes, the Abomination changes, oh. the Black Mark immersion. This was another effectively triggering card in the meta that this point needed to be shifted. Um, mm. Unyielding Spirit burst spell to fast spell. I don't think we need to talk much about this card, but this makes Thank, a lot of sense. Thank God. Makes oh, a lot of sense. This should have happened ages ago. This card this, cards like this should always be interactable with. Yeah. You shouldn't the, just the, have to play yeah. Ionia. Yeah, you have to play Ionia, or if you're playing deep and you get lucky, you can maybe do that. But the the thing with this card is uh, it's exactly the same as my logic for for, for uh Yoink. Is mm. There are certain ways that you could have potentially got around unyielding, but it funnels you into Ionia or Shadow Isles by default, Correct. right? The thing with changing it to fast is you're not necessarily going to see a huge change in the power level of unyielding spirit. No. The only thing that really, really suffers for unyielding spirit is now it is so much more counterable well i mean maybe Correct. then you are seeing a change in the power level like yeah, we are the, i like, think the, the, like, there may be more than just what we see on the surface there's yeah. so many aspects to between burst and fast that well, we may overlook thing, because now the spell is interactable you it can is. you can interact with it like you can deny it or you can chain things you can kill the unit that i'm supposed to be attaching to the worst feeling that you have as you know, uh, uh, playing you know up against like a Fiora deck, for instance, is dragging your Fiora or their Fiora with say a you know a, a Jewel Hunters or something like that, and then seeing the barrier come down, you know you've got the Vile Feast to pop the barrier, and you're like, ha ha, get wrecked, nerd, and then they play Unyielding, <laughs> and you're like, well, okay, that's great, thanks, man. That's a GG. Yeah, um, this is it's it's huge. This should have happened ages ago. I want to see something like this happen to Ezreal. Mm, I straight. do agree. I think we didn't see anything happen to Ezreal this time. They did say it was going to be on the watch list, but I think um, it got to a point where Ezreal wasn't as oppressive as it was. Or maybe it's because the play rate's low. Well, it that's be the thing. Too. So, so Ezreal's win rate's actually not quite that good. Um, Apparently not. And that's why he kind of came off the watch list because his, his win rate's not excellent and that's affecting the rate at which people play Ezreal. The, the problem that I have with Ezreal is he just feels horrible to oh, play dude. against. It's, it's almost just, as bad as Yoink. Almost I, up there. Yeah, the last stream that I had, I played up against an Ezreal and at one point, you, I think stream literally saw me just put my hands up in the air and just go, this is ridiculous. I can't do anything. He, I think I, I was for, went from 16 to 0 and he had 7 mana. It, yeah, it, it, it can it, happen. It's just I it's had a horrible experience. similar experience actually today on stream. 
I was like in a point where mm. I, I'm gonna say here he had seven mana as well, where I felt like I was in a pretty comfortable <laughs> position, and he had like five cards in hand, and I'm like, all right, I, I think I was playing yeah. like uh, Shadow Wilds, and I was playing like a uh, Leedros or something. And I was like, I should be yeah, fine yeah, to yeah. play Leedros here. I don't think he's gonna kill me this turn. I can counter his plays next turn. Uh, I ended up just dying on the spot, and it come down to a zero mana thermo beam that got me, and I was pretty disappointed. Mm, mm. I forgot so about that. That's awesome change. Very happy with that. I make, think now make if, thermo if beam you... not be able to be used at zero mana. Make that a thing. <laughs> make it unplayable at zero. Yes. Yeah. That might not they, be a bad um, change. Yeah. Look, I mean, at this point now, if you if you let unyielding go off, it's your own damn fault. Yeah. Um, Play around oh, it. I think... It's it's opened yeah. up for you. Don't complain if it happens. It is a counterable card. I think this is just logically correct, but it's still going to go off sometimes. So. Don't feel bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, so. I'm going to call out the next card here. We kind of rambled on about Ezreal. Uh, maybe we'll see Ezreal nerf soon. Who knows? But mm. the next card, now this is a rework, you'd argue, but I feel like this is a nerf, if I'm being honest. So yeah? this is Jay Marada. So previously he was a 8-mana 6-6 six, six with Elusive. When I'm targeted, draw 1. Now he states he's a 6-mana 4-4 four, four when I'm targeted and survive draw one they're essentially pretty different effects this is essentially a rework but uh, the, I think this, that, that's that's a clarity change that's a he clarity always change used to work like that he did yeah yeah so uh, i toyed yeah. around with jay madada early and if you he was killed by vengeance oh, it's a clarity glimpse, change is never it? Used to oh, okay draw. yeah but they did take his stats and his elusive Okay, so it is more of a clarity change. Forgive me. I kind of I've never played this card personally, but I just kind of immediately <laughs> don't blame me. <laughs> that's probably why it's getting reworked. I merely jumped on the conclusion that um, because previously he was when he was targeted, so like whatever, he would draw a card. Like mm. you play you play your own buffs, you play like your cards, you combo with him. And I thought mm. for a moment that it was like he had to kind of survive damage. But it's not necessarily mm. the damage, it's just when he's targeted. By anything whether it's like damaging him or not if he survives that he will draw so i guess what's an example of that zero mana thermo beam <laughs> zero mana thermo, zero beam. Mana thermo beam is still going to make you draw a card because he's technically surviving damage he's surviving zero damage yeah okay um, he's losing I, elusive i i don't know I don't know either. You deal with Jay Madonna. The look, the the part that bothers me immensely is why they don't just reduce his attack and buff his health. Like all of a sudden, and if maybe you just say whenever I survive damage, I draw a card. Yeah. Yeah. Because then all of a sudden you're like, okay, Jay Madada is a late game draw engine that you can do a lot of strange things with. Like imagine Jay Madada with like in an Ember Maiden list, for instance. Okay. Like the, the draw that you've got there is just cooked. It, it, <laughs> it just, it just, it just, it's just an interesting thing to think about. Like I, I'm the kind of guy that sits, you know, on, on Rune Terror at night and tries to think about how I can make hunting fleet and, and filling the <laughs> opponent's board with golden <laughs> narwhals work. Like, I've had this idea in my head of somehow using hunting fleet to fill the enemy's board to their detriment. Pre-obliterate on play, it was, a, and it was an idea to lock out the opponent's board, but uh, I'm still trying to work. Like, Jay right. Madada, we, we, I had an OTK list that never came to fruition. Um, did it have Jay Madada in it? Well, the funny thing, yeah, it did. The funny thing is, like, you can target him with buffs. You can. And and he will draw stuff. So he becomes like this little. And he should still do that, right? Like, I'm not. I'm He's still. So just, I'm following back to what I said before. It's just targeting still. It's not really a change, right? Yeah, I mean, you have to hope so. I mean, otherwise he's bloody. It useless. says when he but, survives. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if he just gets targeted, so it doesn't necessarily say he has to take damage. That's true. I guess it's still so, the same. So, yeah, um, so, as a meme player, what are your final thoughts on Jay Madada? He does the same thing, but he's he just does. still shit. <laughs> he does <laughs> like that. Um, I'm sorry, Jay. I want you to work, man. Yeah, look, I want I you think to work. If, you got, if you're trying to be competitive and you want card draw, just chuck a progress day in your deck, please, and you'll be fine. <laughs> just do that please just do yeah. that it's, it's burst speed don't, too don't do uninterruptible do. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm excited for the next card mind meld 8 mana to 7 mana I'm excited because yep. 
I don't know how to feel. I just see changes to it, and like, it looks cool. I like the um the visual of the card. That's mainly have why I'm excited. Have you played Mind Meld before? I have not personally played Mind Meld, but I would assume that it's a meme. It's very much a meme. So, <laughs> like, the idea is that you play spells, and then you play Mind Meld effectively as a finisher, ideally yeah. on a wide board. Um, putting it down to seven mana is just going to make you be able to get it out easier, mm. which is nice. Like as early as turn four, even, which is kind of weird to think about. But, I thought about um, um, making mind meld the same cost, but uh, changing it to fast speed, and then I realized that would actually be broken. But that um, would be broken it needs this. This card actually needs to be slow speed, guys, for sure. Because um, if your opponent goes to block you during combat, and then you, they open you up to an opportunity to play mind meld on the fast. You can actually punish them with the like wide board that goes to connect yeah. face. So this yeah, card probably what, always has to be slow. Always. Yeah, you know what deck this would be in if this was a Captain if this Farron? Was a fast card. This this would be in um this would be in TF Ezreal. Probably TF Ezreal. Easily, easily. Yeah, no TF doubt. TF Ezreal. I'm a big fan because of TF Ezreal. You, heaps of spells, heaps of draw. And you can imagine, like, having a, a 9-9 TF on board. <laughs> is it a permanent? Up, is it a permanent buff? Or is it during the turn, this round? Okay, it's this round. Uh, it's, it's this round. Uh, yeah, this round. Yeah. But just being able to, like, run that stuff in, that's pretty insane. So I guess this may just be another similar treatment to everything else where it may increase its play rate, but I don't think we'll see anything too crazy. Nah. I'm I trying think to think it's, what, it's what trying it competes with. Well, it's trying to create its own archetype. It that's, is. That's what it's trying to do. I think it's just still in, you know, Keck W territory right now. So, uh, I mean, hopefully we see more of it. I think it's a really It's like Keck card. W going to gym. I think he's trying to get better. <laughs> it feels Keck W, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to put Mind Meld in the weird champ for now. And I guess we'll move on to the next card. <laughs> the next card. The next card actually shocked me because I thought this card was okay. But it's getting a buff apparently, and that's going to be Petty Officer's uh, or self body, not the um, summoning. But it's going to be going from a three mana three one to a three mana three two. I was shocked about this. Uh, what do you think? Uh, well, it doesn't get killed by Make It Rain now. Does it? Um, doesn't get killed by a lot so of things, and you don't feel as bad when you summon another one HP unit and you get killed by like Make It Rain and etc. Static shock and all static that shock. Business. I personally yeah. didn't think Petty Officer was too weak. I think it provided a different niche than just being a unit that had to stick on board. I think it was a decent, valuable card that could be used for flexible reasons. I think this is kind of... I'm not going to say it's like me personally. I think it's I think it's a little bit overtuned. I don't know. You think it's going to become an auto-include? It might. It already was sitting on the side of being auto-include a lot of bilge water decks that like mm. it run any form of like make it rain or even like parlay. As, as soon as the deck goes past just to make it rain, I think Petty Officer is an auto-include every time. Yep. Yep. For bilge water, at least. If like if you're building like like a pretty heavy controlly bilge water deck list. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it's still... I, I don't hate it. I don't think it's going to be too oppressive, but I think it may fall into the auto-include category for now. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, it's a good change. It's 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 uh, more safe. Going from one to two helps a big change. It is. Like, so, maybe we'll maybe I'm missing something, but I felt like... Because I play a lot of Bilge Water decks. I think Petty Officer was okay, but I'm happy to see it. I'm not complaining. Yeah, a win's a win, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm going to feel too bad being on the opposite end of a 3-2 Petty Officer for now. Nah. I think a lot of times you'll probably be the scenarios where you're using removal on it anyway and shouldn't affect too much. It just means you can't bile feast it, which hopefully doesn't mm. become too relevant a lot of the time. Mm. Um, yeah, losing three mana to a bile feast is pretty rough. Yeah. What is what is this? Ori, Aurea Poralis. Aur Aurora Porealis. I kind of dropped out in year 11, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> no, so Aurora Porealis is a play on the Aurora Borealis. Which is okay. that um, light phenomenon that occurs? I think it's in the northern hemisphere. It's also that thing in The Simpsons where the 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 guy comes over to the house and he has the aurora borealis <laughs> in his kitchen. Did you just check this before it. we started filming? Nope. Okay, he's pretty I just, smart. I just I just <laughs> know a lot about memes. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> seven mana to six mana. We're getting towards the end, uh, guys. Don't worry. We're fucking the memes are strong. The memes uh, are very strong. What do you think? It's what buffed for it, X. It's, it's, cool. it's a hella like buff. It. This, yeah. is gonna, this is going to... Well, actually, it's kind of like... 
my first impression was like now we can float mana for the first two turns and play this but if we want to play like a tempo variant or a poorer deck then i guess it's still a bit of a buff anyway yeah i don't know cheaper. if you give up i don't know if you give up turn one and two on a poro deck especially not with poro herder at two now I think if we ever saw like, um, if we didn't see the other changes to Poro Herder, et cetera, I think this might be a consideration for floating mana if you kind of had a slow turn. Like if you're reversing a slow deck, you'd probably consider I'm going to kind of do this on turn um, three so I can start to like curve out afterwards and set myself up. Because mm -hmm. you can never do that mm -hmm. before. But now um, you might not even consider doing that since you might play for a tempo Poro deck. But still, seven mana to six mana, I think this is well deserved. Um, I probably mm. needed it. Not yeah, that I've played for... Poro decks very often. Oh, Poro decks are a heap of fun, man. And I'm happy to see the changes because they're just, it's just such a good deck to see. So, mm. I mean, I think it, this looks aesthetically correct as well because you're going to be creating uh, three mana cards from it. You're essentially playing a six mana card that creates two three mana cards plus Poros. Aesthetically, it feels mm. right. Buffing feels right. I don't think it changes yeah. its oppressiveness or even if it did have any. Yeah, no, it's good. I'm a big fan. I'm pretty excited for the next card. I had a look at this. Have you seen the next card? Yeah. I, what have they done? This is probably it's the. Just, it's just, all right, this is probably <laughs> out of all the cards. This is literally a, a total rework. This is like when League of it's Legends. Just a different card. Yeah, this is like it's, when League of Legends said we're gonna change Aatrox, and that one guy typed a huge email to write, and it's like you ruined yeah. the game for me. <laughs> but I don't know if. <laughs> It's just, it's I not like even it. this. It's not even remotely the same. Okay. So for <laughs> anyone who didn't play Ren Shadow Blade, which is probably everyone, because nobody knows what the card is, it was an eight mana six four from the Ionia region that said, stated when an enemy is summoned, uh, granted in fon uh, if firm, uh, follow, if up, firm or follow, follow up, follow up specifically, follow yeah, up. Yeah. You got it. So he'd grant them ephemeral when they're summoned. So it's pretty much like your kind of like weird late game kind of counter card control tool that saw no play because it's utter garbage. Mm. Catch mm. my breath. No, but now, <laughs> mm. but now it looks exciting. Four mana, three, three with quick attack, strike, create a shadow fiend in hand. For anyone that doesn't know, because it's another card doesn't see play. <laughs> that is that one mana, I'm four, three. I'm literally Googling it right now. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a one mana, four, three with a firm reel. Oh, it's that, it's that card. card. Yes. Oh, yes. The, the one that looks like it's got bullet holes in it. Yes. <laughs> so we can't really bring it up. We didn't prepare this properly, so I'm not going to bring it up right now. But some of you guys may or may not have seen it. It's a one mana, four, three with a firm reel. You're going to generate those cards every time you strike with this. I think yeah. that's exciting. Like, I, I can't, can't comprehend if it could be competitive or not. But that definitely is a card we haven't really seen yet. Something it's that, like, like generates... Attack. Yeah, it does have quick attack. Very relevant. Card like this generating cards like that. I don't think there's been as uniqueness to any other card yet. So this is pretty cool. It's this is you, know what, you know what it strikes me as? It strikes me as the poor man Zed. Poor man um, Zed. Okay. Poor man Zed. Because you, you, you're playing it a turn later. You've got the quick attack for value, True. which also means that on defensive turns, it's it's worth less than it is on attacking. Well, turns. actually, when you come when you compare this to uh, Zed, it's actually out of garbage. Yeah, exactly. This is why I say it's the poor man Zed, right? Because it does everything slower and for more costs. But it's what if we run it with now... um, Genevieve, Genevieve Elmhart and we attack twice? Well, now you're talking. <laughs> now you're talking. Um, um, and then you've got two Shadow Fiends, which is just insane to think. It is It is four mana. It's definitely a non, It's definitely not a non-playable card anymore, but I don't know why or if it would be the best card to play. I think it'd be pretty cool to see with Whirling Death and Noxus, some sort of weird burn rush strategy with like maybe Zed curve out into this the next turn and they start to drop. But I don't know. It's, it's cool. also, I, th I think if for one, it's also a flavor change, right? Like a bloke called Shadow Blade makes sense to summon Shadow Fiends. And yeah. the other thing as well Nailed is it. it's just, it's it's also just gone from a weird fringe card to another weird fringe card, but is somewhat <laughs> more likely to see play. Like that's it. It's just it like, it's just a strange card. It's so you'd, just, have to, it, you'd have to say that a lot of uh, Runeterra players, when they saw this, dropped a huge uh, weird champ in the chat. That, yeah, I, I'm willing to bet that a lot of people went, who? <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Wait, like, this, this is kind the of never seen play. Um, there's probably a few people that are seeing this too and going, oh, dude, they're adding new cards into the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're adding new cards. It's, it's the new expansion. Dude, what is Jay and Murata, dude? That card's crazy. I'm so excited <laughs> for these new cards. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, I, yeah. I look. I'm keen to see what I can do with it. Um, Kick W for I, now. Kick W official. I just, I, I have this weird feeling that you could potentially use it with the like Shadow Isles ephemeral list somehow. The other thing that comes to mind as well is the, um, uh, the spell Death Mark, where it transfers ephemeral to another unit, mm. and this could potentially generate it targets could. for that. It could. And so, I think uh, uh, this is going to be one of the epic cards I'm personally most excited for because it is like legitimately a rework. So you probably will see people playing with this. Yeah. Um, I'm yeah. definitely going to try Noxus Whirling Death with this. <laughs> this like yeah. Generation yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. I don't know. Like maybe maybe it's time to start reaching into like maybe like Draven Z as an archetype, and then you can also consider using the Shadow Fiends as discard fodder. Yes. Yes. Interesting, because you're just well. generating cards in hand, so we'll see. Mm. That's going to mm. be something I'm going to personally try. All right. Um, mm. One card left, guys. Um, let's mix it up, dude. Why don't you read out the card for me? You tell me. You ask me what are the first impressions are. <laughs> well, for the last card, Hero, we have a 10 minute 10 10 She Who Wanders from the Felgur region. <laughs> Getting a Beautiful. change in adding the regeneration keyword. Uh, so what are we thinking? First impressions? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to play She Who Wonders to destroy the cards. I don't care if it sticks around. This is like, to me, it wants to be like a anti-combo late game disruptive card. Um, it, whether it dies or not, it doesn't matter. It's the fact that I got to play it is the most important. Uh, regeneration means I can swing with it without caring. Uh, that's pretty it's much my thoughts. It's 10 health with regeneration. It is 10 health of regeneration. I would hope that this, when I played this, though, the game's over because I've never played this card before. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're, you're, you're burning almost an entire turn to play this card. I like. played this once before when I first started Runeterra. I built the deck. I'm like, this is going to be crazy. I'm going to counter everything. And then I played it, and then I realized my opponent's Fiora was still there. I'm like, what's happening? Yeah. Oh, it's followers <laughs> only. Yeah, Shit. it's followers. It's followers only, and the other thing as well is the That's decks pretty that common. most effective against have already killed you at that point. <laughs> um, yes, and you, you probably um, don't have breathing room to do it. Yeah, the other thing that I hadn't considered until now is this is actually a buff to War Mothers. Um, oh, true. This because um, you now you can pull this, and it just gives even more value, even if you don't mm. play it from hand. Um, like this card should be a card where if you manage to play this card and it goes off, it should be, fuck you, I win. That's, it should that's, be. That's, and I think regeneration is just kind of further pushing that to say, yeah. if this hits the board, fuck you, I win. Yeah. <laughs> like, this also does still kind of like feel like the kind of like Darius treatment, the Basilisk Rider treatment. Like it's kind of like a nudge, but it, hopefully I don't think it will make it anything too crazy. Well, that's the strange thing. Like, I Maybe mean, it will. you sort of think to yourself when you go, whoa, 10 health with regeneration. How am I ever going to remove that now? Like, how often were you removing 10 health units with chip damage anyway? Oh, you never were. <laughs> like, uh, I, can't I mean, see, I kind of... I can't see yeah. unless, like, there's a Captain Farrah meta where you counter it with the She Who Wonders. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. I don't uh, know. They Who Endure is what you're going to trade with. <laughs> yeah, dude. Well, we're, um, we're entering the Freljord meta. <laughs> yes, and we also are, we are also entering the final the final chapter the final card here. Um, mm. So I guess I guess I guess I'll leave with a question. I'll ask you what are your final thoughts on these changes, and do you have any expectations, or do you believe anything will change in the current meta? Go. Uh, what are my thoughts? Oh, no, I leave think... it. Take your time, dude. I realize it's, that's a question that we probably needed to talk about prior to setting this up. Um, no, this, no. First I, thing I, that look, comes to mind, I guess. Look, I, I think that what they've done here is this is a, a clear knock at putting They Who Endure down and pushing War Mothers up. 
Um, I'm like, if you look across the board, Freljord got the the really good end of this. Freljord got oh, no, a right. lot of good. How marks. many cards is that? One, two, so, three, yeah, four, five. Uh, half the cards. We'll say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A, a Nivea, Braum, Aurora Porealis, Poro Herder, She Who Wanders. They well, they who endure is a nerf, but a lot of these changes are really, really good for Freljord. Um. I love, I think if if I had to point to a change here that is my favorite change. Hook me up, hook me up dude. Unyielding. 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 <laughs> I, I, I think that as much as I want to sit here and complain about they who endure players and it being meta, I think that's more with my frustration with a stale meta than it is with they who endure specifically. Unyielding is just a horrible card to play against. I think mm. that change to fast represents just such a good feels good change it just it, it it's gonna punish people who let that go through which i'm fine with i mean fair enough if you let an eight mana fast speed spell hit the board it's your own damn fault that's it if you know an affected burst speed shouldn't have an eight mana power behind it you know um the changes to the harrowing are exciting captain farron's Definitely. exciting the, boy. the nab changes. I know the community is going to love that. I'm not super psyched about it. I never really had the same hatred for Yoink. I know a lot of people had, but I think that that's a very smart change. Well, I have enough Shadow hatred Blade. for it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Ren Shadow Blade uh, weirds me out. I think <laughs> Weird we just champ. got a, we, we, we just we just got a new card, man. We, we just got a new card. I'm I'm uh, Jay Madada. The change to him is just. That's I, another weird champ moment. I don't like that one. It's just, Give him elusive, it's, dude. It's, you know what it Hashtag. is? It's, it's, it's the macaroni photo frame. <laughs> it's like Riot has come home and they're like, hey, Viscerous, look at this cool thing that I made. And they show me the changes to Jay Madada. And you kind of see what they were trying to do, but it's just it's just the worst version of it that you would have thought. It's like this horrible scuffed picture frame with like bullshit glued pasta and you're going to have to display it in your house somewhere and your friends are going to look at it and go, oh, that's cute. It's one of those dad moments where you pretend to um, be happy with yeah. what your son's brought you. I, I, I want I want Jay uh, Minata to be good. I want him to get a scholarship and go to uni and do the, you know, the, the, the fucking job of his dreams but i mean um, <laughs> shit but he still needs to be in the special class <laughs> oh. <laughs> well i'll tell you what you've heard it here you've heard it here first i guess as i guess i call myself the host i will say that i am generally over the overview of this is very positive i think riot has had enough practice with balance changing over the years of league of legends we can see a lot of reflection here in these card changes not only are we seeing changes purely based off the power level, but maybe even considering the play rate, which is kind of fun to see. And I don't think we've yeah. seen anything so far that's going to blow up or blow down. I think overall, um, we're seeing some positive changes in the reworks to Epic cards. It's exciting. Maybe they're kind of a little bit on the under, under satisfied on some of the cards, but some of the cards are also exciting. Um, I think the nab change makes sense, although uh, it's still probably going to be prevalent. I think we're still going to get triggered by it. There's no change that I'm mad about. And no, I think that that's I'm something not that I'm really happy with. You know, I, I, I'm either, you know, indifferent, like I don't care, or I'm happy. And mm. I think that that is excellent. Like, that's there's excellent. There's no change here that I sit here and I go, oh, man, that sucks. Mm. And you I know? will add, yeah. I think the sleeper, the sleeper... The sleeper buff here is Braum. I think... Yeah, watch out. Yeah. <laughs> Holy That's, shit. People are going to wake up on patch day and it's just going <laughs> to be... It's going to be Braum. I don't even think, it, don't even think it's going to be like Braum-Vlad synergy. I think it's just going to be Braum feels like a very strong... Like similar to Zed. You just play it. It's quite powerful. That's it. It's just the middle finger to aggro. Oh, dude, it sure is. is. I love so um, uh, yeah. I will I will be adding guys. Uh, joining with me today was obviously Viscerous TV, or we may call him Vis. I'm gonna leave a link to all of his socials, his Twitch, his YouTube, etc. Down below, I believe he streams three days a week, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I yep, think it's a Monday, it. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, if I'm not mistaken. Shit, my man's 
done his research. Look at him Do go. a little bit of research. <laughs> I want to be the proper host for you guys. Um, I just want to say it's. I just, I just want to say it's been an absolute pleasure joining me today for this extended period of time. I know you have work tomorrow. I have to apologize for keeping you here for so oh, long. Look, it's it's all right, mate. It's 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 the life. It's it's a busy life, but it's a fun life. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's, most definitely. It's been an absolute blast. And um, yeah, I guess we're gonna wake up in a couple of days or a day. Patch, get ready. Absolutely crazy. Uh, this is going to be us signing out. Uh, Visus, I would like to add, do you have anything you would like to say or any additions to what I may have said or uh, any self-promotion or shout outs you want to do? You can go ahead and do that right now. <laughs> uh, no, look, you nailed it. Streams Monday. I did, yeah. Wait, I told, I told you what out. time his stream is. That's um, it. Um, go you know, check him we out. We might play some Brom. We might play <laughs> some... Uh, we might we play, might some, play some Jay Marat. <laughs> Jay Marat. I, I, I just, I know chat is going to bug me to play Jay Marat and I'm going to have to find a way to make it work. All right. <laughs> just, yeah, and guys, good. if this is the content you want to see, would you please be so kind as to leave a like? I am desperate. <laughs> <laughs> I had a ton of fun doing this. I would really like to do this again soon. Uh, leave a comment, say hello. Tell me your thoughts, all that kind of cringy uh, YouTube nonsense. Alrighty guys, that's gonna be us. Say goodbye to Viscerous, say goodbye to Fake Hero. I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Stay hydrated and uh, good luck on ladder.